Brought to you by wikivd.com Harmony Kareen Harmony Kareen is an American film director and screenwriter. He is best known for writing kids, and for writing and directing Spring Breakers, Gummo Julian, Donkey Boy and Mr. Lonely. His film Trash Humpers premiered at Toronto International Film Festival and won the main prize. The Docs Award at CPH Docs in November 2009. His most recent film, Spring Breakers, was released in 2013. Personal Life Kareen was born in Bolinas, California and raised in Nashville, Tennessee, the son of Eve and Sol Kareen. His family is Jewish. His father was a tap dancer and produced documentaries for PBS in the 1970s about an array of colorful southern characters. He would take Kareen to carnivals and circuses and taught him how to use a Bolex camera. As a child, Kareen watched movies with his father who rented Buster Keaton films and took him to see Eve and Dwarf started small in the theater. Kareen reminisces. I knew there was a poetry in cinema that I had never seen before that was so powerful. As a child Kareen changed his name from Harmony and went by Harmful, as he thought it made him sound tougher when he got in fights. Kareen spent his childhood in Nashville attending Hillsborough High School before moving to New York City to live with his grandmother. Kareen also spent some time living with his parents in a commune which helped to inspire the commune setting of Mr. Lonely. As a teenager Kareen frequented revival theaters watching classic films by John Cassavetes, Werner Herzog, Jean-Luc Godard, Rainer Werner Fassbinder and Alan Clark. In an interview with Bruce LaBruce, Kareen briefly mentioned that he studied business administration in college. Other sources state that he studied dramatic writing at Tisch School of the Arts at New York University for one semester before dropping out to pursue a career as a professional skateboarder. Kareen met Chloe Sauvigny in Washington Square Park in New York City during her senior year of high school in 1993. The two became close friends which resulted in her being cast in the low-budget independent film Kids. They had a relationship that ended in the late 1990s. He is married to actress Rachel Kareen, with whom he has one child Lefty Bell Kareen. Kids and Gummo, 1995-1998 Kareen was skating with friends in Washington Square Park when he noticed photographer Larry Clark. Impressed, the photographer asked him to compose a script about skaters and to include in the plot a teenage aide's experience. Kareen told Clark, I've been waiting all my life to write this story. Within three weeks, Kareen wrote kids a film about 24 hours in the sex and drug-filled lives of several Manhattan teenagers that has been touted as a realistic viewpoint of youth in New York City during the AIDS crisis. Kids garnered mixed reviews but due to its NC-17 rating few audiences actually saw the film upon its debut. However, it has since become a significant cult film. Among others the film features Chloe Sauvigny and Rosario Dawson in their first movie roles. The film, while controversial, jump-started Kareen's career. This put him into contact with film producer Kerry Woods who budgeted about $1 million to produce Gummo. Kareen's personal vision. In 1997 Kareen wrote and directed Gummo, a film based on life in Xenia. Ohio, a town devastated by a tornado in the early 1970s. Foregoing conventional narrative, Gummo embodies sketches written by Kareen hence the non-linear fragmented events over the course of the film capitalizing on the obscure. Much of the cast was found during pre-production where it was filmed in Tennessee and of all those who appeared in the film, only five were experienced actors. The film is notable for having unsettling often bizarre scenes, 
as well as its dreamlike soundtrack which strengthens the disconcerting atmosphere. It features an eclectic soundtrack including death metal Madonna and Roy Orbison. It premiered at the 24th Telluride Film Festival on August 29, 1997. During the screening numerous people got up and left during the initial cut drowning sequence. Three months later Werner Herzog called Kareen to give praise to the film overall especially the bacon taped to the wall. During the bathtub scene, he told the New York Times when I saw a piece of fried bacon fixed to the bathroom wall in Gummo it knocked me off my chair. Kareen's a very clear voice of a generation of filmmakers that is taking a new position. It's not going to dominate world cinema but so what? Although a majority of mainstream critics derided it as an unintelligible mess it won top prizes at that year's Venice Film Festival and earned Kareen the respect of noted filmmakers such as Gus Van Sant among others. Its stature has only grown in the ensuing years gaining a cult classic status as a truly shocking an experimental film unlike anything you've seen in a while maybe ever and that if you're the kind of person who claims to be frustrated by the predictability of commercial filmmaking it presents a rare opportunity to put your money where your mouth is in 1998 kareen released the diary of anne frank pt2 a 40-minute three-screen collage featuring a boy burying his dog kids in satanic dress vomiting on a Bible and a man in blackface dancing and singing. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. It utilizes some of the same actors and themes as Gummo, and can be considered a companion piece as the film utilizes footage that didn't make the final cut of Gummo. The film further disgusted critics and solidified his status as a notoriously shocking and experimental director. Julian Donkey Boy and Ken Park 1999-2003 Julian Donkey Boy released in 1999 included a signed Dogme 95 manifesto. While it broke a number of the movement's basic tenets Lars von Trier lauded Kareen's ability to interpret the rules creatively. The story is told, from the perspective of a young man suffering from untreated schizophrenia played by Ewan Bremner. As he tries to understand his deteriorating world, Julian's abusive, and arguably hypersensitive father is played by Werner Herzog. At one point Kareen was to play the son but he backed down and was replaced by Bremner. Like Gummo and Kids it too has since become something of a cult classic a go-to film for those seeking cinema that is. As Roger Ebert said in his three-star review shocking for most moviegoers and like the slick above-ground indie productions that are now the norm. In 2000 The Devil the Sinner and his journey premiered which featured Kareen in black metal corpse paint as O.J. Simpson and Johnny Depp as Kato Kalen. In 2002 Larry Clark made Ken Park, based on a script Kareen had written several years earlier. The film, another adult tale of youth gonna awry was not distributed in the United States. At the time of its release Clark and Kareen had long since parted ways, and Kareen had no involvement in its production. In 2003, he made the television documentary Above the Below about his friend and collaborator David Blaine and his 44-day stunt in a park over the bank of River Thames in London inside a suspended plexiglass box. A documentary commissioned by Sky Television and Channel 4 it also includes jokes, visual poetry and music. In addition, Kareen has worked with Blaine on a number of Blaine specials. He first met his wife Rachel Kareen, a 17-year-old from Nashville around this time. Mr. Lonely and Trash Humpers, 2007-2009 His third feature film Mr. Lonely was co-written by his brother Avi Kareen and star Diego Luna, Samantha Morton, Dennis Lavant, Anita Pallenberg, David Blaine, Werner Herzog and Mal Whiteley. 
The movie was released in 2008 and debuted at Cannes. His largest film, with a budget of $8.2 million it received mixed reviews and earned $386,915 in its first nine months. The film is the story of a young American man lost in Paris. He scratches out a living as a Michael Jackson look-alike dancing in the streets in public parks, at tourist spots and trade shows. Different from everyone else, he feels as if H.E.S. floating between two worlds. During a show, at a geriatric home Michael Jackson meets Marilyn Monroe. Haunted by her angelic beauty he follows her to a commune in the Highlands, joining her husband Charlie Chaplin and her daughter Shirley Temple. The commune is a place where everyone is famous and no one gets old. Here the Pope, the Queen of England, Madonna, James Dean and other impersonators build a stage in the hope that the world will visit and watch them perform. Everything is beautiful, until the world shifts, and reality intrudes on the utopian dream. Corrine also appeared in the 2007 documentary film Beautiful Losers in which his life and career were one of the foci of the film along with other artists such as Mike Mills. Shepard Fairey, Margaret Kilgall and Joe Jackson and Barry McGee. In the documentary, Corrine discusses his motivation as an artist and filmmaker as well as his inspiration for creating films he has never seen. Footage also appears from one of Corrine's rare early and untitled short films which preceded his work on kids. In 2008 Harmony Corrine was signed to MJZ for worldwide commercial representation. On 6 September 2009 Corrine's film, Trash Humpers, premiered as part of the Visions section of the 2009 Toronto International Film Festival. Despite being a work of fiction the film went on to win the top award at the prominent European Documentary Film Festival CPH, Docs Copenhagen International Documentary Festival in November 2009. In March 2011 Corrine released a short film entitled Dumshini Wham, which is a popular Zulu struggle song meaning Bring Me My Machine Gun. The film starred Ninja and Yolandi of Diantward. In September 2011 Corrine released a short film entitled Snowballs, sponsored by the Proenza Scola fashion label Spring Breakers. Corrine's next project was the crime drama Spring Breakers which was produced in 2012 in Florida and starred James Franco, Selena Gomez, Vanessa Hudgens, Ashley Benson and Corrine's wife. Rachel Corrine, in looking at early scenes being filmed and in speaking toward the plot cast and earlier works of the filmmaker Indy Wire wrote, This might be the weirdest movie the director has ever made simply by nature of being totally unlike his previous work. That Mr. Corrine appears to be having it both ways may seem like a cop-out but only if you believe that the role of the artist is to be a didact or a scold," wrote the New York Times. Principal filming wrapped up on March 30, 2012. The film was selected to compete for the Golden Lion at the 69th Venice International Film Festival. Spring Breakers received its world premiere at the 2012 Venice International Film Festival and later was shown at the Toronto International Film Festival before being released to the general public in March 2013. Art Corrine released a number of photographic collections usually in conjunction with gallery exhibits. In 1998 he published The Bad Sun in conjunction with Takarashi Gallery in Tokyo documenting his various photo shoots with Macaulay Culkin. In 2002 Past the Bitch Chicken was released a collaboration with artist Christopher Wool, which consists of Corrine's photographs heavily edited by Corrine and Wool. In 2009 he published Pig Hoti in conjunction with the Vanderbilt University Fine Arts Gallery, and released by Nieves. 
The university describes the exhibition, which ran through February 26, 2009, as culling together a number of photographs from Corrine's private files in order to reveal a side of the artist's creative process that remains largely unexamined, depicting an unnamed, mysterious young girl moving through a televised landscape of shifting contexts. Picote further illustrates Corrine's interest in replacing plot lines and expected narrative tropes with intuitively arranged experiential moments. They also provide a unique insight into the poetic mind of Nashville's most compelling prodigal son. Most recently his works were presented in a 2003 exhibition at Agnès B.S. Gallery du Jour in Paris with whom Corrine has often been associated. In 2010 Corrine collaborated with New York visual artist Bill Saylor on the book Ho Bags. The book consists of drawing and paintings in which Corrine and Saylor drew over each other's works. In 2011 Corrine collaborated with the New York brand Supreme, releasing a set of two skateboard decks featuring original artworks by Corrine. Music Kareen has directed a number of music videos for artists such as Sonic Youth, Cat Power, and Will Oldham. In addition, he sang on Oldham's Ease Down the Road, and co-authored the lyrics of Bjork's musical composition Harm of Will, from her album Vespertine. In 1999, Kareen and Brian Degra of Gang Gang Dance released a music CD SSAB Songs. I don't really know what it sounds like, Corrine explained to ID magazine. I only listened to it once. I think it's the kind of album I'd only listen to once. The tracks labeled Harmony on songs in A, who also made the soundtrack to Mr. Lonely. Harmony, Corrine, is the lead track on the solo album Insurgents by Porcupine Tree lead singer Stephen Wilson. He has also directed a music video for Gold on the Ceiling by the Black Keys from their album El Camino. He also co-wrote the song Florida Kilos with Lana Del Rey and Dan Auerbach which is featured on the deluxe edition of Del Rey's album Ultraviolence. Kareem directed the video clip Needed Me by Rihanna which was released on April 21, 2016. In the same year Corrine directed a Supreme commercial starring rapper Gucci Mane and appeared in the music video for Gucci Mane and Travis Scott's single Last Time. Themes and Influence Much of Corrine's work is based around the dark humor and absurdism involved in dysfunctional childhoods, mental disorders and poverty. This is often incorporated into surrealist non-linear forms and presented experimentally. Blackface tap dance and minstrelsy are common elements to Corrine's work. I'm a huge fan of vaudeville like Fanny Bryce, Eddie Cantor and Old Jolson. There's this random tragedy associated with the decline of the vaudeville entertainer, which is a theme in Gummo that I completely stole from vaudeville. Like vaudeville, the narrative of Corrine's work is abstract and works by association. Corrine compares this concept to a book of private photos. On their own each photo would be seemingly random and devoid of context but because they are compiled in one volume and presented in succession, a narrative exists. That's how Gummo was written. Improvisation is also an important filmmaking technique for Corrine as a way to maintain his movies as living thing. S. Corrine does not try to write messages or meanings into his scripts as he finds it belittling to the audience. With his films, Corrine strives to retain a margin of the undefined. Despite the scorn of a majority of mainstream reviewers, he has won festival prizes at Venice and Rotterdam among others and established directors such as Bernardo Bertolucci and Gus Van Sant are outspoken proponents of Corrine's work. On Gummo Van Sant said it changed his life and Bertolucci said Corrine has created a revolution in the language of cinema. 
A significant number of scholarly essays have been written on the importance of his oeuvre to film and art in general. The Toronto International Film Festival writes such is the dilemma with Corrine and his remarkable career for all the fireworks. There is an impressive coherence in the subject matter of his work. His four feature films all seek to shed light on a certain class of people, unique and bizarre individuals usually lumped under the heading of subculture. His portraits come, from many angles the baroque stillness of Gummo contrasts radically with the rough-hewn melodrama of Julian Donkey Boy. His last film, Mr. Lonely, had an epic quality and interest in celebrity that Trash Humpers disdains, preferring instead a low-end surveillance video look with frequenting camera lighting distortions and a cinema very authenticity. Recurrent in his work is a portrait of what Corrine calls the American landscape. He recently stated to me, the most beautiful thing in the world is an abandoned parking lot and a soiled sofa on the edge. With a street lamp off to the side, America seems like a series of abandoned parking lots, street lights and abandoned sofas. Such a statement gives insight into Corrine's complex aesthetic. Corrine has frequently been labeled as an enfant terrible and been accused of exploitation and self-indulgence to which he has responded how can an artist be expected not to be self-indulgent? That's the whole thing that's wrong with filmmaking today. To me, art is one man's voice, one idea, one point of view coming from one person. Corrine feels there is no need to justify or explain the images he puts to the screen, in that they are simply the result of a cinema of passion and obsession. I mostly just make things to entertain myself and, at the same time hope that there's some type of audience that likes what I'm doing. Corrine adds, film is like a dead art because of people not taking chances. To Corrine, the only films that matter are the auteurist works. On the current state of cinema, Corrine comments when I look at the history of film the early commercial narrative movies directed by D.W. Griffith say, and then look at where films are now I see so little progression in the way they are made and presented and I'm bored with that. Film can be so much more. On looking for meaning in his films Kareen states, I think people will lose the film as soon as they start trying to figure out my logic or what I'm doing or while we're watching it start to dissect metaphors. I'm not really so interested in it working on a purely cerebral level. I'm much more concerned with it on an emotional level and that you leave feeling a certain way. Kareem states that if there is at least one image that sticks with you after viewing the film, then it is a success. Producer Carrie Woods writes, I think the best hope for cinema is allowing people who are artists to make a movie that isn't wholly ruled. By screenplay structure, Kareen's a storyteller and H.E.S. gone out of his way to put images that are moving on the screen and meaningful in some way. As critic Roger Ebert said in his review of Julian Donkey Boy Kareen who, at 25 is one of the most untamed new directors belongs on the list with Goddard Cassavetes Herzog. Warhol Tarkovsky Brackage and others who smash conventional movies and reassemble the pieces. Harmony Kareen is the real thing an innovative and gifted filmmaker whose work forces us to see on his terms. In 1997 Kareen's favorite writers were listed as James Thurber S.J. Perelman and Flannery O'Connor. Kareen has noted British filmmaker Alan Clark as an influence. In a 1999 Dazed and Confused magazine article Corrine listed his top 10 films as For Hoti by Hector Babenko Badlands and Days of Heaven by Terence Malick Fat City by John Huston Stroschik by Werner Herzog The Killing of a Chinese Bookie in A Woman Under the Influence by John Cassavetes McCabe and Mrs. Miller by Robert Altman Out of the Blue by Dennis Hopper and Hail Mary by Jean-Luc Godard. In popular culture, 
The opening song on British progressive rock musician Stephen Wilson's solo debut album Insurgents is called Harmony Kareen. Brought to you by Wikivd.com. Would you like to know more?